Modern karate is unrealistic. Either you can't use certain techniques, or you can't strike certain targets, or you obsess over form rather than function. That's why I often travel to Okinawa, the birthplace of karate, where they still practice the old ways. Or at least they used to. Because the reverse influence of modern karate has forced many old masters to change their ways. The art is becoming a sport, even in Japan. For this reason, I've had to seek out many different masters to learn as much as possible before the knowledge is lost forever. In a culture that values loyalty above everything else, this approach is highly unusual. And that's exactly why I've discovered something highly unusual. I was taught the exact same exercise from three different grandmasters in three completely different dojos, yet they all claimed it was unique to their style, which tells me that the exercise must have been handed down from ancient times, before karate was divided into different styles. But here's the crazy part. This exact same exercise is also practiced in Kali, a traditional martial art from the Philippines. Coincidence? Maybe. But archaeologists have discovered several prehistoric Neolithic tools with the exact same morphological features in both Okinawa and the Philippines. Meaning, although karate was born in Okinawa and influenced by China, perhaps it was conceived way earlier in the Philippines. There is only one way to find out. I'm going to learn Kali and see exactly how it compares to traditional karate. Whoa, you broke it. This could be my skull. The only problem is I need to convince my girlfriend to come along and film everything for you. Luckily, I have a plan. Do you want to go to Gothenburg and celebrate our seven year anniversary? Yeah, but cute. Men varför pratar du engelska? She swallowed the bait. Now all we had to do was travel for a few hours, check into a fancy hotel, and enjoy what the city had to offer. The following day, it was time to pop the question. Before we go home today, could you film a training session with me and a friend? Yeah, but why are you talking English again? My plan worked perfectly. It was finally time to meet one of the world's leading Kali experts and investigate its karate connection. I think this is it. That's the guy. My training hadn't even started, but I was already seeing karate movements on the wall. I think we found the right place. This is Johann Skolberg, direct student of the late great grandmaster Ernesto Presas. With over four decades of experience, including multiple full contact Kali championship titles, Johann's resume is unparalleled. Usually he spends his time traveling the world, teaching master classes, special forces and bodyguards. But today he's agreed to spend his time with us. It's time to explain why I'm here. When I was in Okinawa, uh, I discovered the exact same exercise being practiced in three completely different karate styles. And this exercise, I'm just going to demonstrate it to you in thin yeah. air without yeah. an opponent and yeah. see if you recognize it. Okay. So somebody attacks me. I block the attack on his inside, right? Mm -hmm. Closed hand, open hand, doesn't matter. I scoop it around, I push it down and I punch back. Yeah. Does this look similar to something that you do? Yes, it's called uh, hubud. Hubud? Yeah. Hubud is a Filipino word that literally means to entangle. And believe it or not, there is an ancient form of Okinawan grappling called tegumi, which translates to entangled hands. And if you reverse the words, you get kumite, the modern form of karate fighting. So can you teach me the correct way to do this trick? Yeah. Okay. How, how do you do that? How many days do we have? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I, I, we, we can definitely do that. I'm a quick learner. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> we're gonna start with sticks. Sticks? Yeah, and then we're gonna go to the empty hands. So and we're then, not gonna... Okay. If you have time, we will do the knife. 
Okay, this is interesting. Kali includes several weapons, just like old school karate, before it was split into a separate practice called kobudo. One principle with this setting. Okay. Then we're gonna do the um, same principle with one stick only, mm -hmm. but that can be applied later on with a knife. If you wanna to go to jail, you can also do it with two knives. You go to jail quicker, <laughs> but it's uh, part of the art to understand because um, we want to have an interpretation to the empty hands that every move is a hit, stab or slash. So I'll, I'll teach you the hardest thing from the beginning, the, okay. the, the salute. <laughs> okay. This is uh, teacher teach me with respect from my heart. Teacher teach me with respect from my heart. From my heart. Yes. One, two, three. So that's the same thing. It's the same thing. Like, yeah. So you already know this. I recognize this. Yeah, you already know this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. You kind of got that because you've done it already mm -hmm. in your karate. Mm -hmm. So now the, the, the benefit of the stick, uh, yeah. in my perspective, is I can practice a little bit hitting without actually hurting you or get any injuries. I'm forced to be inside. Ooh. Okay. If I can move, yeah. or I can shoot. <laughs> You broke it. <laughs> I didn't even notice. This could be my skull. <laughs> okay. All right there. Okay. Okay, so you're gonna make it 50% easier. Wow. <laughs> Going for the temple. Oh, like a hammer fist. Yes, like yeah. a hammer fist, exactly. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> So now I can start to do my block together with a hit. Okay, so I will block and hit. Yes. So that could be my disarm, mm. because if I, you have a weapon in that hand, yeah. I'm very eager to be able to disarm. Ah! <laughs> wow. <laughs> so the basic hubad drill is something you can add things to, to kind of make, spice it up with yeah, different I, kinds I of I need to make a little bit fun of this guy now, because if yeah. you say hubad, yeah. means get naked. What? <laughs> and that's not gonna happen on this class. You need to say, you need to say who would. Who would? Who would, yes. Okay. Ready for empty hand? Let's now? try. It. Yes. It's gonna be 100% easy now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we're gonna be doing that. Hmm. One, two. So this is probably three. what you've been doing in your karate. Maybe with different attacks, I don't know, but yep. similar. Yep. We did actually, we did a straight punch. Okay, yeah. that's okay too. Yeah. Maybe we speed it up a little bit and we don't think so much about form and suddenly I can change the energy. And now you have to react to that. <laughs> ah, one, two, three. And you can okay. choose if you want to go heavy and powerful. Yeah. One, two, yeah. Or you can choose if you want to go a little bit narrow and mm. faster so you can play with energies there. Yeah. Wow, this is a very valuable exercise, I think. Okay. Yeah, cool, just yeah. from this short introduction. All right. I'm gonna start teaching this to all my oh. students. <laughs> I'm stealing First this. I, yeah, sure. <laughs> Here. Okay. Whoa! Do that one there. Whoa! That was insane. And and the movements you did before were classical karate movements. It is. Yeah. Later on, yeah. I want to be able to understand when can I have my knife reference. Ah, okay. <clears throat> because now I'm stabbing. Yeah. So that might be a reference. Yeah. Okay, now maybe I want to have that boxing. Oh, yeah. So how can I switch over to boxing? Mm. Because I, I will not box, we're too close. So right, we, yeah. We will not be good boxing there. Yeah. But if I have, a, okay, the elbow game might be here because mm. I'm on that range. Yeah. Or maybe I'm feeling you too powerful. I can't afford to stay here, so yeah. I have to, use kicking range and mm. stay away from you. I try to wrap it up with uh, do some blade stuff yeah. with the same principle because I like to have one principle and many applications. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll take one knife each. Should I have the sharp part towards me or you? And a very common answer when I'm teaching is yes. <laughs> if I'm looking for slashing in front of me, the blade should be there. But it can also be like I'm on a hook and, and work with a blade mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. like a shaving action. One, two, three. Yes. Forearm. Yes. So every technique can be countered. So this is my counter to your stab. Mm. And that might be a counter there. Yeah. And then you're blocking, which is right. a problem for me, but that can also be countered. Oh. 
or I'm trying to get it on there. And then you can start to do change ups and stuff like that. <laughs> you killed me thrice. Yes, yes. Do you incorporate any kicks? Yeah. Yeah. How, sure. how could that look? So if you just drop a knife for a little while. Yeah. In, inside this framework, it would be more short range kicking to, ah. to the knees and stuff. Would you say this is the classic Kali kick? Yeah, we call it Sipa. We do Sipa. all our kicks as well. And I, I talk a lot about how a smaller opponent can hit a bigger. So if I'm struggling to do what we just did before because you're yeah. tall, yeah. so I can't get my head up here. I have to do something to, to ruin yeah. the structure. Should we continue with any more of the blades or is that it? Depends on if you want to do some double blades, if you want to learn how to go to jail quicker. Yes! That's good. So it doesn't make sense to see you punching against this. So I would never attack you if I saw no, you. No, exactly. That's why you need to hide them. Well, I can't even see them now. Look at that. <clears throat> I slash your arm first, slash your throat, and then I kill you again. <laughs> so now let's make sure I go to jail quicker. <laughs> I love that. Don't try this at home. But I'm going to do that mm. with my empty hands now. So I'm doing that. I yeah. don't know what this is. Right. So that could be a back fist to the biceps. It could be that I'm just mm. being over there. Mm. But it could also be that I'm distracting you ah, to set man, you up man. for a big punch. Yeah. This is a classic karate movement. Yes. The, the, the explanation I got for this movement was that it's dark outside and you can't see your opponent so you need to search for him uh -huh. but i think this is more practical yeah i would say so <laughs> I, but uh, the thing is I, I don't want to think right so whatever this hand is doing if I, i'm controlling you there if i'm stabbing you to the throat mm. or if i'm just get that flinch yeah because that's a good reaction yeah that i can utilize mm. uh, so we don't care and if i miss the second one okay i, I might be like hitting here okay because With the same a, arm, you pull yes. and... Okay. So whenever I get that reference, when I'm here, I'm <laughs> striking. Wow. Here, so I'm pulling and hit with a forearm. Yeah. Like a bicep bump. Yes. Yeah. Huh. So those are nice. Or, or when you're here, you just hit yeah. with that, but on the ne neck, of course. Oh, yeah, or up, up here. Yes. Yeah, okay. But it just look good when you teach. So yeah. Make the body well, it's a lot of power, yes. even down here. Yes. If I got that in my neck, I would be... KO. Yes. Mean. Camera yeah. ready? <laughs> <laughs> it was <a> hypothetical. <laughs> so back to Hubert again. Yeah. Okay. So whenever we are here. Okay, now I'm here so I can start doing those things. Yeah. So that now a little bit the sensitivity we talked about before. We can utilize them. Hmm. Or when we are here. Oh, I block. Yes. Yeah. And now we can ah, yeah. do stuff like that. Yeah. So I try to get you off my line so I can strike you from the side. Wow. It's like endless possibilities. It is, it yeah. is. But there's martial arts. Exactly. All martial arts have yeah. all of those things. So At now least we're the real martial arts. Yes. Yeah. But now we are creative now because now yeah. you have to have the, all of that coming out. Yes. And you have to do your basic drilling. You have to do your ABCs mm. so much that you don't have or need or want to think about them any longer. But mm. that takes time. Like mm. we can all learn boxing in 15 minutes. It's not that much punching. It's a jab and a cross and a hook and an uppercut in a way. Yeah. But it's a minute to learn a lifetime to master and I would say that about any martial art. That, yeah. uh, I think that's a great note to end on. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing thank your, you. your it's time, a your experience and your expertise. Yes, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You very much. There's no doubt in my mind that the Karate Kali connection is real. The main difference seems to be that while Karate has become increasingly dogmatic, Kali has remained intensely pragmatic. Wow, I had so much fun and I learned so much about the connection between karate and the Filipino martial arts. Plus, I even got a little souvenir to take back home. I really hope that you enjoyed that. I can't help but wonder if this is what karate would have looked like if it wasn't modernized. Did the Okinawans also use sticks and knives? And how does this connect to the Chinese roots? I have a feeling that I'm only scratching the surface but I'd rather have questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. That's the beauty of karate. There's always more to learn, and I can't wait to share my future discoveries with you. In the meanwhile, check out some of my other videos about the roots of karate, especially the ones I shot in China and Okinawa. Thank you so much for watching. Train hard, good luck, and have fun.